Hello and welcome or welcome back. I've got an extra short video for you this week because I'm literally in the middle of packing for a 10 day trip and I don't want to go that long without posting something. So I thought I'd grab something that I've been seeing in the comments a lot. People asking about pausing your game. And since I already have that wired up in my game template, which I will link in the description if you want to check that out, I figured why not pull it up and have a look under the hood. We'll do as we always do and fire up the final product so you can see what we're working with. Of course, we're back here in our sample project and I've added this adorable little dog who's just going to serve as our way to tell when the game has been paused. So we see him walking and when I hit the escape key, I get my settings menu. It's important to note that the settings menu is indeed interactive and the rest of the game is not. I can't use the arrow keys to control the player. The whole game is paused. As soon as I hit close or hit escape again, the menu goes away, the dog resumes, and I can walk again. So let's take a look at how that's set up. We're going to go over to this globals file, which is an auto load, meaning it's accessible from anywhere in the project. And I'm going to call out a few things that are specific to the settings menu. First, we're going to preload that scene so that we can instantiate it at any point in the game. And then I've got this placeholder variable, which I'll explain down below. In our process function on this auto load, we're looking for the cancel input. And when that's detected, we're going to call this open settings menu. I'm going to command click to go to the body of that function. And now you can see we're using this settings menu to check whether that's null. If it's null, we don't have a settings menu. We're going to instantiate it, store it in that value so that it's no longer null, and then we're going to add it to the scene tree. I don't love this implementation because it doesn't feel scalable, but as I'm always saying in my comments, one step at a time. It works fine for now, and when I need it to be more robust, I'll refactor it. The other thing I do want to call out is right now, the way I have this set up in an auto load, if I hit escape anywhere in the game, it's going to run this method. And that's probably not ideal because in a lot of games, it's common for escape to work as back. So maybe I've got an inventory or a dialogue with an NPC. Maybe I want to be able to hit escape to back out or close those windows. I don't want to open the settings window on top of it. So that's something I'll probably come back and beef up later. But as I've said, for right now, it works just fine. So now let's take a look at how that pausing works. I'm going to open my settings menu. You'll see it's inheriting from canvas layer, which means it's always going to be drawn on top. And the only thing we really need to look at for this example is down here in the bottom in this notification. And by the way, if I had more time, I actually wanted to make a video about notifications. They're not talked about a lot, but I think they're really neat. I just think they're neat. So if you're interested in hearing more about OS level notifications, let me know in the comments. Um, there's also input events that work very similar to these that you can do all kinds of fun stuff with. I just didn't have time to make a bigger video. So we're going to talk about pausing for now. We can come back to the other stuff later. So this notification is available to every object in the game just like ready and process that you're used to using. So when those notifications bubble up through the tree, you can catch them by checking for these constants because they're received as an argument of the notification function. And when you match on one, you'll be able to drop in and do something as a result. In this case, we're calling get tree paused, which will pause all the nodes in the game unless they have their process node set to ignore that. So just a real quick second, the notification enter tree fires when something is added to the scene tree. And likewise, the notification exit tree is fired when a node leaves the scene tree. So we're making use of that to pause our game anytime the settings menu is added to the scene tree. And likewise, again, we're using it to unpause when that is removed from the scene tree. So here's our settings menu. And over here in our properties, under node process, we have this mode dropdown. And right now we have it set to when paused. It's important for your pause menu to either be set to when paused or always. Otherwise, when you pause the game, this too will be paused. You won't be able to interact with it. And as a result, you won't be able to quit. By default, all nodes are set to inherit, meaning it will obey the settings of the parent or grandparent all the way up to something that doesn't have inherit set. Pausable, as far as I can tell, is effectively the default if everything above a certain node is set to inherit. When pause means that this will only run when the game is paused. And when I say run, I'm talking about process, physics process, input, 
and input event methods. Always, of course, means that those processes will always run, regardless of whether the game is paused or not, and disabled means what you think no processes will run ever. In our case, when paused and always will work basically the same way because we're only ever showing the settings screen when the game is paused. Real quick, and then we're gonna wrap this up, I wanna show you what happens if we leave this to inherit. When I run the game and pause, if I try to click on this or make changes, nothing's gonna receive input because none of those inputs are firing. And of course, now our settings menu is not useful because the game is paused, but also so is the settings menu. So when you're setting up pausing for your game, you wanna make sure that anything that still needs to be accessible while the game is paused is set to either when paused or always. That's gonna be it for me today. By the time you see this, I'll be about halfway through my trip. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to schedule one for the week after this, but I've got a whole bunch of other videos you can check out in the meantime, which I'm gonna let Google recommend right here. As always, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I will see you in the next video.